and welcome to this week's preview show here at Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Silence Chris Temple joins me as we look ahead to this weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at that 0-0 draw with Norwich at Vitality Stadium last weekend. We'll also be joined by Cherry centre-back Nathan Ake. And finally, we'll look ahead to tomorrow's trip to Vicarage Road. Well, we're going to start back at last week and that nil-nil draw with Norwich. Chris, it, it wasn't the best game to watch, was it? I think it was a stone wall last game on match of the day, that is for sure. Um, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a great spectacle. I mean, uh, in terms of saves, you know, Tim Krull, one save from Dom Solanke in the first half. Aaron Ramsdale made a great save, by the way. I'm not sure the camera angles, I, I saw it on match of the day, I'm not sure they actually did the save justice. It was a really good save. Um, so, yeah, one notable chance for each side, a lot of huffing and puffing. You know, Norwich played pretty well in the second half in terms of the counter-attack. Um, I can see they're gonna, they'll are gonna they get some points this year away from home on the counter-attack. But yeah, second half, particularly Bournemouth, weren't at it as an attacking force. Um, you know, again, the reasons for that remain to be seen. That's why, you know, they do the hard work behind us here on the training ground to, to rectify those things. A lot of aimless crosses came into the box. Um, Callum Wilson and Dom Solanke couldn't really get on the end of anything. Um, and it, yeah, it just didn't happen, which is frustrating, you know, at home uh, against a team, you know, newly promoted, um, two points dropped. Uh, people will always see that as two point jobs, and I think rightly so, given that Norwich hadn't been in great form coming into that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's one to draw a line under, not reflect on too much, I don't think, and hope things turn around this weekend. Absolutely, and and you mentioned you know that Dominic Solanke chance that really was the one clear cut opportunity that the Cherries had to take the lead, and you saw him through pretty much one on one, and and you know you backed him to score. I think everyone's willing him to score. It's getting to the stage now where you just you really want one to go in for him because I think he can add a lot to the team, and I think you will see more of that when he has got the confidence of a goal behind. Him. I think he's now played 40 Premier League games and has had 40 goal attempts and has only scored once and that was for Liverpool obviously uh, going back a while so yeah it was on his left foot that one um, and you just yeah the connection maybe wasn't quite as good as he, he would have hoped for um, but it was a nice link up to get in the position so I think that's you know an element of you know what we can expect from a Wilson Solanke partnership up top um, so yeah I mean again we, we're going to say it every week till he does score we did it with Jefferson Lerma and then he eventually scored so I'm hoping for Dom Solanke that you know he can a, a goal will really kick him on. And one positive from the game, which we'll talk to Nathan Ake about a bit later on, was that clean sheet and, you know, first clean sheet in the Premier League. It can breed confidence throughout the side and was, was really needed, wasn't it? Yeah, they're, they're the stats that can sometimes hang over you. Like, I haven't kept a clean sheet in X number of games or X number of weeks. So it doesn't matter who it's against. A clean sheet is important. At home where, you know, the home form hasn't been, I said it last week, hasn't been quite as good. I think it's, what is it, two wins in 11 at home? It's on the face of it. That's not great form, um, really. But there's been a few draws in there as well and, you know, good win over the likes of Everton. Um, but, yeah, uh, a clean sheet first and foremost. And for Aaron Ramsdale to get one under his belt personally, I know it's a, a defensive unit thing as we'll hear from Nathan Echo shortly, but, yeah, for, for Aaron Ramsdale to get his first one in the Premier League, which is not directly earned him a new contract, but the, the, what he's produced over the last few weeks has earned him a new contract this week as well. So, yeah, really good for him and hopefully that'll you know, be a nice boost. And another thing, perhaps surprisingly at the time, we saw Adam Smith straight back into the starting lineup, and he didn't have a bad game at all, did he? No, he did well. You know, he's, the thing about Adam Smith is he gives you a bit of a buzz, doesn't he? Because he, he is a, a bit of a wasp. He's everywhere. He's up and down. He's, he's and, you know, he chases lost causes. Um, he does add something different. Um, I, I much prefer him on the right hand side. I've got to say, I know he much prefers playing on the right hand side as well. Obviously, players will play wherever the, the manager tells them. I know that's the cliche they'll all trot out, but I, I like him being able to join in on the on his natural side down the right hand side as a as a support for. You you know, Harry Wilson, who's been playing there, whose natural game is to cut in onto his left foot, of course. So I really do think he had something. Saying that, I think it was harsh on Jack Stacey. I think we said that last week, that he's done pretty well and has been, you know, finding his feet at the top level. Um, so it's tough for him. You know, he was left out of the 18 for tactical reasons last week, not because he was injured. So you go from starting a few games in a row, playing pretty well away at Arsenal, and then all of a sudden you're out of the 18. So, you know, welcome to the Premier League. But um, I'm sure he'll, you know, his chance will, will definitely come again. But for, for Adam Smith, you know, he would be you know, one of the top four or five names on your team sheet, I'm pretty sure, are fully fit. And now going into the game on the weekend, it's one defeat in five. And of course, that defeat against Arsenal, second half performance was largely positive. So, you know, there's there's positives there and, and certainly things to build on. Yeah. And, you know, going back further, you know, you think of the away win at Southampton and, you know, there's some excellent football played there. And you've only got to look at last year's away game at Watford if you want any inspiration, because, um, you know, Bournemouth were going pretty well at the time last year and, 4-0 up after 47 minutes. Um, I know Eddie Howe was disappointed they didn't go on and make it you know, six or seven in the end because they were playing against 10 men for over half the game. So 
yeah, away from home, there's been, you know, it's been, I, I personally always think Bournemouth are more suited to playing away from home. I mean, it doesn't always pan out that way when you play against the big teams because, you know, it's, it's a tough ask to get anything there. But I just like, I like the freedom that the team can play with away from home. The counter-attacking football is so good to watch when it's, when it's firing. And it really was firing at Watford last season. That was one of the most destructive 45 minutes you'll see. I know against 10 men and people will say, you know, you should be able to do that against 10 men, but it doesn't always work out that way. So, yeah, away from home, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, ending the, the two-game scoreless run. Absolutely, fingers crossed indeed. Now, it's been a busy week on the training ground as Eddie Howe has been putting his side through the paces ahead of the weekend's game against Watford. Nice and sharp, good technique to through there. One goal and off. The winner stays on. Hope at the end for the team that wins the match. Nice. <laughs> Love it, Jeff. Yes. 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 Well, that was the squad in training earlier this week. Now, as you can see, on his way into work today, we have grabbed Nathan Ake. Nathan, thank you for joining us. We've obviously got Watford away this weekend, uh, a team you played for on loan for a year. Just tell us what your memories are of, of that, that 12 months. Uh, good memories only, to be fair. Um, I came a bit late, so the first few games I missed, um, and I had to settle in and get into the team. Um, and actually this manager was then now uh, Sanchez Flores, he, g he gave me the opportunity and yeah, I managed to, to get in the team and, and play like 24, 25 games, so it was a good experience for me. And obviously Sanchez Flores, he's he's back at Bournemouth, he's back at Watford and, and you know, what what for you, what were your memories, you know, playing under him? What was he like as a coach on the training ground and, and on the touchline? He was good, uh, energetic, um, he liked to, to work hard and get his uh, ideas across very good in, in training so we, we knew um, exactly what we had to do in the game um, very organized um, and a very nice guy as well his, his stuff is, is very nice so uh, I liked working under him and I think that season we done really well as well um, so it was a good experience on him and your former teammates there is there anyone you know you still keep in touch with or still keep in contact with that you'll be seeing mm -hmm. tomorrow um, yeah, most, but he didn't play there, but uh, Chaloba is, is a good friend of mine, so um, so he's there now, but I didn't play with him when he was at Watford, but, but uh, at Chelsea, but uh, now I keep uh, in contact with him a lot. And one thing from that season, you of course played at left back, what was it like for you, you know, playing at left back and now you're a centre back, is there a specific position that you prefer or, or at the time was left back where you wanted to play? Uh, to be fair, at that time, uh, I would have played any position just to play. Um, but uh, it was a good experience to play left back um, a whole season to learn, and I think I learned a lot. So um, I can play it now, but uh, I think centre back is more a little bit more natural for me uh, in the middle of the pitch, um, either centre back or midfield. So I prefer that more, but uh, left back is an option as well. And just going back to last weekend, obviously the first clean sheet in the Premier League of the season. How much confidence can that give you and, and the rest of the defenders at, ahead of the game tomorrow? Yeah, I think uh, it was a must. I think uh, we, we wanted it so bad. Uh, we worked hard for it, um, but it's just the beginning. I think against Arsenal, I think the second half especially, we defended really well as well. So hopefully there's a progression. Um, so yeah, we, we want to keep that keep the same um, and work with the whole team the same to, to keep another clean sheet. But uh, obviously it will be tough, but yeah, we're hoping for it. And what's it like, you know, this stage of the season where we've got international breaks left, right and centre? You just want to build a little bit of momentum and, you know, get a few results together. But you, you've got players coming and going yourself as well. What, what's that, that like as a player? 
yeah, obviously it's, it's part of the game. I think um, we have a lot of internationals in the team now. So um, it's a bit hard to, to travel everywhere, but we need to get used to it. Um, I think we are used to it. Normally everyone is back on the first day before the game on Saturday. So it's enough time. We know each other. We know the team. Um, we know everyone. So um, it's not too difficult to, to come back and, and play the game on Saturday again. So um, yeah, I think it won't be negative on us. I think uh, we just need to get used to it and uh, we will do well. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining Cheers. us, Nathan. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the fans and wishing you and the lads the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Cheers. And now we're going to bring Chris back in after we've heard from Eddie Howe, who has been speaking to the media in his pre-match press conference. I'm really pleased uh, for Aaron. I think he's had a, a really good start to the season. And I think it was important that um, from our side, we, we were rewarded that form. It's important we build on last week's clean sheet, as I said, going into this game and, and try and get to, back to winning ways as quickly as possible. We've always you know, found Watford um, very difficult opponents, so I'm sure it'll be no different this year. They've got very good players, an outstanding manager. I know they've changed manager, but really an outstanding manager, so we know it's going to be a tough game. We can only control ourselves, and if we go there, focusing on their league position would be totally the wrong way to prepare for this game. Um, we go there and focus on ourselves and make sure that we're right, motivated. We know how big this game is for us, ourselves. You know, It's a pivotal game for me because we can be looking upwards if we get a positive result and as I said last week I think you see how tight the league is um, if you don't get a positive result you're potentially looking the other way so um, although early stages in the league campaign this is a, a key game. Well that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference Chris as we said you know Watford tomorrow and it's it's not been the start of the season they would have wanted has it? Certainly hasn't the change of manager already of course which you know caught a few people by surprise funny I was listening to a couple of Watford podcasts this week in sort of preparation for the game and you know there, there was a mixture of yes there was surprise but also sadness because I think they felt that Javi Garcia had obviously played a big part in the club's emergence you know towards the upper end of the table um, but you know, the, the second half of last season, I think the FA Cup run to the final um, masked over a few cracks in their in their setup, if you like. They were conceding goals for fun. They've been conceding goals for fun again this season. Um, so, yeah, I think most people accepted that something had to change. The surprising element was going back to something they've, they've tried before because they've been, you know, sort of reinventing the wheel in this time rather than going to something fresh. So, Kike Sanchez Flores has a, rea um, a reputation for being a bit more defensively solid and I think he's he's changed their shape already to play the three at the back um, to, to try and solidify a little bit. Bournemouth put seven past them last season in, in two games, um, you know, the 4-0 away. We've got to mention the 3-3 three, three here as well, which was, you know, 3-3 three, three by half time. It's an absolutely ridiculous game. And then no more goals in the second half. So, yeah. four and six minutes in that game, yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was correctly. absolute madness. That really was um, off the back of the 4-0 away from home. So, it all happened in those games. There was a 2-2 before that as well, I think. So, a bit like we stood here last week and said it definitely won't be 0-0. We won't make any predictions along that line this week. Um, but, yeah, it, so in terms of Watford, I think... They, they would take I think this season they've, their fans would already say they would take finishing 17th um, because they've had such a, a bad start but we are only nine games in I think that's the, the perspective again to, to keep um, so I would expect Watford to be much tougher to break down um, than they get they played well at Spurs last week probably should have won that game bit of VAR controversy in that game as well um, I'm going to throw in the expected goals as well because it's something I, I often look at just to give an idea of a team's form I know Eddie Howe looks at it as well some people don't understand it at all it's the little XG thing that pops up on matches of the day sometimes but Watford basically should have eight points more than they've got they should be above Bournemouth in the table based on the quality of the chances they've created so basically they can't finish to put it in a nutshell um, they should I think have eight goals more than they've scored they should have conceded five goals less than they have and they should have eight points more which is a huge number of points at this stage of the season so and Bournemouth should only have nine points I think and they've got 12 and Watford should have 12 so just to give you an idea as to fact how the fact that maybe some of the uh, the stats mask how they've been playing up to that final ball or the final shot um, so I think they're, they're certainly no mugs even though they're bottom of the table um, and Vicarage Road it can be a raucous place to go they filled the corners in there as well they've got plans in place to develop the stadium even further so yeah they're, they're a club who are you know trying to ink themselves into the, the sort of top six or seven and stay in and around cup finals like they did last season well as you say there you know you mentioned goals scored but goals conceded 
21 in the Premier League this season and a minus 16 goal difference. Obviously, that game against Manchester City not doing them any favours no, there. No, that was a disaster. I mean, those those games can really hurt you as a one-off as well. Just sap the, the confidence, can't they? But I mean, that's pretty much probably why they've they've gone for the uh, you know back to Flores as the defensive option. Okay, let's start first and foremost by stopping conceding goals. Uh, the other problem is they've obviously Troy Deeney's been injured. He's not only a he doesn't bang in 20 goals a season. He'll get you 10, but he's he's the lead of the talisman as well. Um, so he's obviously been out injured and still will be. Danny Welbeck, they signed to maybe solve a bit of the, the goal scoring issues. Injured now for a few months, has had some, some rotten luck. And I think last week they ended up playing um, away at Spurs with sort of two wingers. They did, I don't think they played with a centre forward. They played with, with Pereira and Delafay almost as an inside left and an inside right. And then Decore was sort of getting on f from midfield to join them as a sort of a, an auxiliary centre forward. So it's a, a strange way of playing, which I'm not sure Tottenham knew how to deal with. They had three centre halves marking no one. So we'll watch out for that tomorrow as well. They don't really have an out and out number nine. Um, it's tricky players like Pereira and Delafay who are going to create openings for, for midfielders coming on. They're certainly the ones to watch aren't they you know players like Delafayu they've got pace they can really hurt defenders when they're on their game yeah I mean Delafayu's a great player I mean you know ex-Barcelona I mean he's one of those he, he would fall I would group him into the Ryan Fraser category that when he's when he's good he's really good and sometimes those players when they're having a, a, a bad shot they, they're not really that good you know they're, they're sort of two ends of the scale if you like there's no real middle ground um, so I think Delafayu has his horrible days as well uh, Watford fans will probably tell you that but you know, when he's on his day, as you say, he can make things happen. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're, they're solid and resolute Watford, first and foremost. They, they have been direct in the past and they play it up to Deeney and then people feed off him. They have to do something different now without him in the team. So I think Steve Cook and Nathan Ake and to be honest, any other centre-halves, taking someone like Troy Deeney, who's just a pain out of the team, you know, physically he's a pain um, to play against, um, makes life better. But then you've got Delafay whizzing around around your feet. So, you know, which one would you rather have? Well, we know about, about Watford's injury news, of course, as you say, Troy Deeney there and, and Danny Welbeck who got injured last week but in terms of our, our injury news no fresh concerns Adam Smith back in the squad and you know we're, we're gradually getting there. Yeah, Jefferson Lerma, obviously, who's uh, been celebrating his birthday this week as well, uh, missed out last weekend with a with a bit of a knock, didn't he? So, you know, again, it, it begs the question of uh, which two do you go with if all three of those sort of first frontline central midfielders are, are are fit and available? I don't think Lewis Cook quite hit his hit his mark last week. I think so far he's just struggling to to build the rhythm. He had a couple of games and he was out of the team for a couple of games. Um, came back in last week, you know, he did fine, but in a, in a, on a day when a lot of people weren't at their top top levels um, so I think he, he could do with the run of games but it's hard to see where he's going to get that at the moment because Lerma and Billing are the undisputed seemingly central midfield pair at the moment so um, we know there's so much more to come from a fully fit fully firing Lewis Cook so he's got the ability there I just think he needs some minutes on the pitch to help him achieve that so yeah apart from that you know I think the team will pretty much be I mean Joshua King you know, will be pressurising to come back in, having been tired from from Norway duty, and I think he looked a bit tired when he came on. I think Eddie said that after the game as well. So, he had a, a storming game at Watford last season. So, um, if he can replicate anything like that, that would be good news tomorrow. And just finally, 24 hours to go. Give us your score prediction. Well, obviously, last week I was uh, pretty much bang on when I said that Norwich wouldn't score. We won't worry about their other half of my prediction, which I think might have been three nil. Um, I, I think, think it's going it to be. I think it's going to be entertaining tomorrow. I think uh, I'm actually going to go for. Uh, oh, I'm going to go for Cherries to sneak it 2-1 because Watford have solidified defensively, but I think Bournemouth are going to find their feet on the counter-attack. 2-1 Bournemouth. 2-1 Bournemouth. Well, if you're over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score this weekend, head to cherrytochampions.com. You could win two hospitality tickets to our game against Wolves next month. That's all we've got time for today. If you are going up to Watford, have a safe journey. If not, make sure you listen to Chris on BBC Radio Solent and on AFCB TV for live commentary. Bye for now.